Hello. Hi. I'm Peter Wells. Uh, hello. I'm here today to talk to you about QGIS 3. Um, that's not what it says on the program, but never mind. Uh, I'll also talk about XYZ tiles as well and the tile support in the uh, latest version of QGIS. Hmm. Right. Second time I've given this presentation. I traveled also a long way this morning, so I blame my sleep deprivation on any big mistakes I'm about to make. Um, so QGIS 3, um, why, why 3 and not 2 point something? So there's going to be a, uh, a major uh, version, version change soon. Um, this is usually indicates some kind of major change. Um, the last big change was uh, back in 2013, 2013, where we went from QGIS 1.8 to 2.0. Um, yeah. And uh, shortly we'll be moving to three. Um, why the big version number change? This is for some kind of major changes taking place, um, which are not necessarily user facing as well. So um, the, the idea of this presentation is to perhaps talk about some of those non user facing changes and why, uh, what, what such a thing means to the end users and in terms of which versions uh, we're using in the future. Uh, will QGIS 3 be less or more stable, et cetera? So hopefully this will make more sense in a second. Um, what's different with QGIS 3? Um, three main things. The first is uh, this thing called Qt, uh, the Qt framework, which basically is used to uh, provide all of the um, graphical user interface, much of the graphical user interface functionality within QGIS, this um, Qt framework. Um, and also uh, Python 3. Um, currently we're using Python 2 for QGIS, and Python 3 will be quite a big change and something called an API break, um, which I will try and explain in just a second of what that means from a practical perspective. So, um, the Qt thing I mentioned. Uh, currently, QGIS is based on Qt 4. Um, this is a big application framework, um, which is currently end of life, um, which means it's not officially supported by its developers anymore. Um, so there's already a growing number of issues with QGIS on, on, on Mac uh, and also with some Debian and Ubuntu users because uh, as those operating systems kind of advance more and more, then the, these old uh, legacy Qt 4 packages may uh, not necessarily be working as well. Um, Qt 5, uh, besides being supported, has some interesting new aspects and features. Um, the application framework itself has much better support for mobile devices, for example, Android. And this relates to some other ongoing side projects. So I don't know how many of you use things like QField or other mobile-based QGIS-related tools. Um, but there's currently an initiative that we're looking to set off to basically develop a, a mobile or tablet framework for QGIS. So not necessarily a product or anything like that user-facing, but a framework so that other developers can then build things on top of that. And that uses much of this functionality of Qt 5 um, to basically provide things like touch opt optimized graphical user interfaces for, for mobile devices like Android, um, which will obviously look different to the desktop ones. You don't use like a desktop interface on a mobile device. Uh, mapping components and support, basic support for like capturing new geometries, editing features, and also seamless sync between desktop and mobile. So this is a kind of a side project that's going on at the moment but that's pretty much directly supported by all these cool new features of the Qt 5 framework. Uh, these include things like sensors and location, support for high-res displays, and a whole bunch of other things as well, but I think the mobile element's really the, 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 the interesting part from a user perspective. So nothing there yet, but I think that in the future we can uh, um, uh, probably be seeing quite a few mobile-related bits and pieces coming out. Um, why Python 3? Basically because Python 2 is legacy since about 2010 um, and it's basically all the improvements to standard libraries are now in Python 3. I'll skip over that. Um, what is an API break? Uh, this is, uh, well, an API is basically an application programming interface. It's a, uh, an interface point where things like QGIS plugins and other software which uh, uses parts of QGIS will, will interface with QGIS itself or the QGIS library. Um, 
for such a, uh, an interface, you would expect that you'd need to maintain some kind of compatibility so that third-party developers writing plugins and things know that those API calls they're making um, will be correct. Um, and, and that means that there's been some co compatibility maintained across the entire two-point whatever release. Um, while that's happening, and there's all of these other releases of QGIS going on over the course of that two, th three years, when was it, since 2013, something like that, the internal code base of QGIS is, is continuously changing, but we still need to maintain this compatibility for the API. Um, this basically means that you have an increasing uh, amount of, let's call it, code baggage um, behind you on the project. So the project is becoming more complicated as the API changes, but you still need to provide this, this kind of non-changing interface point. So what the API break, or basically API change, means that across this big version, uh, change. We can remove any kind of old legacy code that's, that's been uh, this baggage forming, uh, have a general cleanup, make things consistent. Uh, this, uh, and also any like huge reorganizations here that just wouldn't be practical to do at any other time. Um, why is this useful? Um, basically because then each l the major uh, code revision, we still have a piece of software that's maintainable going forward instead of just having this baggage get to the point where you're trying to, in five, six years' time, maintain a whole bunch of spaghetti code. So it means that as the QGIS project uh, progresses forward, then there's a nice code base that the developers can, can work on uh, in an in a, in a efficient way. Great. So lots of talk about source code related bits and not really user facing bits and pieces. What will QGIS 3 look like? Probably not that much different from the QGIS that you're used to now. This is mainly a, a, an API related thing. Obviously there will be some more features by that point. Um, the target for release of QGIS 3 is quarter one 2017, but basically as far as communication goes, it's uh, when it's ready. Um, what happens when it's released? Uh, Immediately when the, this, uh, this uh, version is released, uh, because of the API break, the plugins, there's probably 600 plus plugins at the moment, um, there'll be no plugins um, because each of the plugins will need to be ported to QGIS 3, um, which if you uh, maintain a plugin, there'll be some nice documentation uh, of how to do that. This happened in the, the, the one to two release as well, which wasn't a really big deal. Um, so there's some nice documentation for that, but it basically means that the plugin developers of those individual plugins will need to manually go and update those. So you may expect that when QGIS 3 is released, there may not be any plugins for some time. Um, what does this mean from a uh, user's perspective of using QGIS in your, uh, let's say, organization, public, private sector, whatever? Um, most people I would have thought in a kind of commercial setting will be using the long-term release version of QGIS, I suspect, um, which is currently 2.14. The plan currently is to that that will be maintained for one plus years, usually it's one year, um, basically until uh, there's a, a long-term release based on QGIS 3 that gets announced. And the current line of thinking is that this probably won't be 3.0 because of such a major change, and it will most likely be 3.2 will be the next long-term release. But anyway. Uh, so 2.14 will be the long-term release till that. Um, that was not actually true. That was week Friday, something like that. QGIS 2.18 was released very recently, um, and this will continue um, uh, until the, the 3.0 3 is released with various maintenance releases. Anyway, QGIS 2.18 released recently. What, um, what is new in this? Some of the elements that I wanted to show to you today. Good. Uh, our native support for WMTS and XYZ uh, tile servers, um, for example, your Bing mapping, OSM, Google, all of this type of stuff. So previously, you've probably used the OpenLayers plugin or maybe for better performance, something like Quick Map Services plugins to pull this online web mapping through. Uh, now, this is uh, supported within QGIS itself, so there's no need for such plugins. Um, <coughs> I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Give me one second. So here we have um, an, uh, QGIS 2.14. So this is with um, some web mapping provided by probably uh, Quick Map Services plugin. Uh, and you'll notice how whenever I pan the map, or in fact when I zoom the map, the screen goes blank for a second. 
and then the map is drawn, and the map becomes visible when the uh, when all of the tiles have been fetched from the tile server, because this will be stitched together multiple tiles to make this image. Um, the process of uh, that map drawing blocks the user interface, so I can't quickly pan the map. I need to wait for each of those uh, screens to be refreshed. In 2.18, um, the procedure is slightly different. Uh, it looks something like this. So just before I demo it, you can see on the left-hand side in the browser panel here, uh, there is a, an entry tile server, and if I just right-click on that, I can select a new connection, and here I just need to paste um, a URL um, for a tile server, for example, something like, I don't know if I still have it open, okay, open weather map or something like that, so you would just literally paste this uh, URL and give it a name to populate this list of tile servers here. So very easy to add them. Once the tile servers are added, let me show you the difference. Mm. Hopefully my internet connection holds out now. Okay, I'll try to zoom into an area that I don't already have um, tiles for. So when I'm zooming in, uh, that's a bad example, you can see that the tiles are um, being displayed as soon as they're fetched from the server. The internet connection's pretty quick, so, so it's a bit difficult to notice. But rather than needing to render the entire image and then put it up on the screen, each tile will, will be placed on the screen as soon as it's fetched from the server. Um, also, uh, you'll notice as I'm uh, zooming in to any given location, uh, rather than blanking the screen and waiting for the whole image to be rendered before being displayed, it stretches whatever was on the screen last, as you would expect for a kind of better user experience. Also, um, I can pan and zoom the map, uh, and the effect of that, the, um, the user interface is not blocked while I do that, so it should be much easier to zoom into specific locations, and the map stays on the screen, as you can see here. Um, what does this mean in practice? Basically, you can see here a video uh, using Nope, that's the wrong one, sorry. It's not the one I wanted, where is it? Why have I lost the video I wanted to play? Anyway, um, this should basically mean that finding any location with the background mapping should now be much quicker and, and more efficient. Uh, coming back. So, also in new in 218 improvements to color picker, um, various bits and pieces with labeling, offline editing as well. I don't know if many of you use that, but you can now offline a, a subset of, of, of a remote data set, which is particularly useful if it worked, because at the moment it doesn't work, it seems. But anyway, I'm sure that will be fixed soon. Um, and various other changes with um, attribute editing. So, lots of interesting new features. Uh, if you're interested in tile servers, such as the ones that I was just pulling in data from, um, there's a nice Python script developed by my colleague which uh, provides a XYZ tile server based on QGIS in just 100 lines of Python. Um, so it's quite easy to use. Just edit a couple of um, lines in some Python file, uh, run the script, and then you'll have on your machine or whatever machine you've, you've, you've got that running on, a little uh, server that's listening for requests, for example, from something like QGIS or a web mapping client, and that will render your project in uh, XYZ tiles, serve those tiles, and also cache the tiles. So something nice if you want to experiment. Anyway, I think that's my time slot. Um, is there any questions at all? One at the back there. I was about to point my laser there, but that would be very, uh, very rude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear very well. Yeah, potentially. Um, Uh, I, I'm not sure if that would be potentially a problem because uh, the 2.14 um, is the current long-term release and that would be pretty much supported up until there's a viable 3-based um, long-term release. 
So, yeah, um, at least a year. But uh, was, did, just sorry, does that answer your question? Well, at the point when you do the switch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the older um, 214 release would still be there. I mean, your organizations can switch over whenever they want. Yeah, I would usually advise not doing it as soon as an LTR is released immediately. But yeah, yeah, must, yeah. I tend to avoid things with dot .o at the end for various reasons. Cool. Cheers. Any other questions? No. Great. Thank you.